an absolute YouTube goddess who I was previously unaware of has dropped the most incredible video about Eugenia Cooney. And I feel like the implications for not just Eugenia could be huge, but also for every eating disordered person online. This is like the good side of the internet coming with all its weaponry and it is so cool to see. <laughs> So hello you wonderful human of the internet and welcome back to another eating disorder related video and one that I am really quite excited and very very happy to make because an absolute YouTube goddess who I was previously unaware of has dropped the most incredible video about Eugenia Cooney and I feel like the implications if enough people see this video the implications for not just Eugenia could be huge but also for every eating disordered person online who has felt the knock-on effects of the hatred shown to Eugenia Cooney that suddenly everyone with an eating disorder, particularly a visible eating disorder online, you are subjected to the same knock-on hate. All the buzzwords that people have picked up to throw at Eugenia will be thrown at you. All the body checking accusations, all the toxicity accusations. And all of this is coming from the fact that the public have grown so frustrated with Eugenia and the fact that she doesn't seem to be getting better. Like, it's, you know, it's infamously a very long running, very complex, very difficult to get out of illness. But she hasn't turned it around like this. So suddenly everyone hates her. And the people who don't know anything about eating disorders online they're basing their whole education on assumptions and rumours about Eugenia. And that is doing harm to all of us. So the video that I'm talking about, I hope I'm not going to mangle this creator's name, is by Aileen Desine. I will link it below. But the reason that I felt I wanted to try and signal boost this video, even though she's actually a larger creator than me, is that the video is in French and although it has a fair few views, it doesn't seem to have broken hugely out of the French language sphere yet. Am I about to translate everything for you because I'm fluent in French? No, I am not. <laughs> but fortunately, somebody in the comments on another video mentioned that you can do auto translate on it and the translation is pretty good. Like it seems to mess up pronouns pretty badly. There's a few like oddities in the translation, but like 99% of it seems to be perfect. You can make it out. You can watch the video. And I have not been glued to such a long video. It's about an hour and 12 minutes long, I think, this video. So it's very thorough. Like Aileen really researched. I think she actually spoke to Eugenia to make this video. So a lot of these are actually truths coming from Eugenia. They are not relying on rumors and gossip and things that are like passed on from other YouTubers who've never met her, which like, all of us who have made videos, self-included, about Eugenia are guilty of doing this. So I really, really, really respect and applaud Aileen for the, the depth of research she did on this video and for approaching Eugenia directly and trying to get her opinions. And Eugenia came right back and was open with those opinions by the sounds of it. So if you want to see this video, as I said, I will link it below. If you've never auto-translated a video before, I will leave instructions also down in the drop down for how to do that. Because although I feel like a lot of people know how to do it, I'd never done it before. And it did take a bit of fumbling around for me to work out how to do this. But this video, whether you want to pause me now and go watch this and come back, or whether you want to watch at the end, some of the just Ah, brilliant points that were made. One of the things that has been really driving me crazy regarding the Eugenia Cooney hate lately has been the petition. The petition to kick her offline, basically, to kick her off all of the social media platforms that she's on. And people, I like, I can understand where people are coming from with this petition and saying, you know, oh my God, she's so toxic. Look at her, she's so toxic. She shouldn't be on this platform. But you have to think about the, like, petitions are legal, right? They are legal-based things. As in, there has to be some kind of legal reason or legitimate reason for a petition to go through and for someone to be banned from a platform. So you have to delve into the reasons that you are going to use, legally speaking, to petition someone off a platform. And what are those reasons when we're talking about Eugenia? Now, the reason that people think they're trying to kick Eugenia off the platform is that she is actively promoting anorexia. But 
as Aileen so carefully researched and pointed out, Eugenia has never actually said a single word that promotes anorexia. She's never talked about what she eats in a day. She's never talked about what she weighs specifically. She has always said, you, you know, you are beautiful just as you are. Please don't do this. When people have talked about having ED behaviours, she has always said, please, please don't do that. You're beautiful as you are. You know, blah, blah, blah. She has never said anything to promote anorexia. Therefore, all we are going on is what she looks like. So the two points you would be trying to ban Eugenia from this platform with would be, A, she looks unhealthy. That sets a bit of a dangerous precedent, doesn't it? You've got to think about precedent when it comes to petitions and legal stuff like this, that the minute you do someone for something, you can do everyone else for doing something similar. So, OK, Eugenia looks unhealthy. She can't be on this platform. What about people at the other end of the weight scale, people who are unhealthily overweight, should they be banned too? But then you've got reason number two for trying to kick Eugenia off this platform, which is the most terrifying one. And that is, well, she's clearly promoting anorexia because of what she looks like. Well, why does she look the way she looks? Because she has an illness. So we're trying to ban someone from their job and their favourite hobby because they're sick. Uh, I'm pretty sure there must be a lot of cancer patients online who have also lost a lot of weight and who now look unhealthily underweight. Would they be also banned under this ruling because they look unhealthy and they are unhealthy and if they're like making the best of their day and they're doing a try on haul because it's the one day in the whole month that they felt good enough to do it but their body is really really emaciated due to cancer we don't throw accusations at those people of promoting cancer. We, you know, that that even saying that is just just kind of like that, that is so freaking wrong, dude. That shouldn't even be coming out of your mouth, even sarcastically. We we don't do it to people who have these illnesses. And some people may feel that I am rather overstating things here by comparing it with life threatening diseases like cancer. But I think, unfortunately, the general public do have a very confused view of what condition Eugenia is currently battling. That, as Aileen pointed out, eating disorders may be very common, but of this statistic, anorexia nervosa is a lot, lot rarer. And I would push on from there to add that severe and enduring anorexia nervosa is very, very, very rare, even within the anorexia nervosa category. When you're trying to compare someone who has been sick with an eating disorder for a year or two years and then they've come out of it, compared to the 10 or so years that Eugenia has been in it, that is comparing apples and oranges. It really is. I know we hate to get into this, oh, you know, someone's sicker than someone. You can die of an eating disorder, you know, quite early on into the disorder. Severe is, is not really what we're talking about, but it's the length of how long something has been running and how ingrained it becomes in your brain and how hard it can be to get out of it. There can be so many factors in there and there are a lot of people who do unfortunately have incurable anorexia and who will finally die of their illness or who will opt for medically assisted suicide due to the severity of their illness depending where they live. As far as Eugenia goes I would say she is probably a little bit too young at the moment to be labelled with severe and enduring just yet but she is very much moving in on that category and she may not be one of these easy success stories that we hear so many of. You know, all of us know someone who's battled an eating disorder and won. Not many of us know someone who has battled an eating disorder and died. It's a lot rarer to be incurable, but those cases are sadly out there and we may well be looking at one. And I think that does need taking into consideration and context here. And I thought it was really interesting the way that Aileen described the turning of the tides of opinion when it comes to Eugenia on the internet, particularly in the subreddit that discusses her. Eugenia's subreddit apparently has gone from really being, you know, quite concerned and quite caring and how can we help her? What should we do? And now she posts anything and it's 
this mob witch hunt mentality, making mocking memes about someone who's sick and all of this, like it flashes me back to the treatment of Amy Winehouse. And actually I made a video, I never posted it, um, but I did try making a video about Amy Winehouse a while back because it was like the anniversary of her death and it made me think, my God, the world has changed so much. The way Amy Winehouse was treated when she was alive was that there were like, Amy Winehouse impersonators pretending to get really drunk, pretending to smoke crack, stumbling about the place, falling off the stage. This was the performance of an Amy Winehouse impersonator, completely mocking mental illness, completely mocking addiction. And these days, the reason I wanted to make that video about Amy Winehouse was I was thinking, my God, people have changed. People don't do this anymore. Oh, fuck, they do. The possibility of losing her, I would say, is very real in the next sort of eight-ish years, I would say. And I just don't want people to have these, like, awful regrets about things that they did and things that they said not you know i also don't want eugenia to be pursued into her grave by hatred but also i think you know i'm probably not talking to eugenia right now i'm probably talking to potentially people who may have become a bit snarky towards ed people and i think us as ed people are not immune to this in fact we may be more susceptible to being snarky about eugenia than anyone particularly if you're fairly well recovered because the thing i found with recovery is that you really there's this point where you just lose the ability to empathize anymore and this is not just eds but depression and stuff too like i had forgotten that depression physically hurts until it kind of came back and bit me in the ass again in the last year. And I was like, I'd forgotten this. And the same with eating disorders. Like, you become unable to empathise. And because of the fact that you've made it out, you feel like anyone can. And you feel like you have the answer. And when you share that answer and someone doesn't immediately recover, you can really rage out. You really can. So I think a lot of recovered ED people are the ones who become quite snarky towards Eugenia. And... The TikToker who Aileen mentioned or showed some of the videos of, I had stumbled across her on TikTok too. She would popped up in my For You page. And, like, I think the girl is a recovered ed person. But she was fixated, fixated on Eugenia. Literally video after video after video after video after video, talked about nothing else. And they were so scornful and so full of hate. And obviously she was being encouraged by this, by seeing her algorithm shoot up. The fact that, you know, Eugenia is always this popular topic of conversation. And the nastier you are, it seems like, the more popular people come. And this doesn't, doesn't just go for Eugenia. This goes for everything and everyone on the internet right now. I feel like tearing people down is so much easier than building people up. Like favourites videos. People don't so much make favourites videos anymore because there's no real bite to it. People are getting so hooked on the adrenaline of anger and hatred. And genuinely, like, anger and hatred can be addictive. There are just neurochemicals shooting off in your brain when you feel these things. I have seen channels lately who make their entire living tearing down people on other platforms and audiences just get off on it they really do but i just find it such a toxic energy and i really wish that would change about the internet so when i saw aileen's video and it was just so pure in vibe just so uplifting and so pure in vibe about eugenia cooney but not not in any way wimpy you know people were called out things were called out um, research backed it up and I was just, oh my God, the, you know, this is, this is like the good side of the internet coming with all its weaponry and it is so cool to see. <laughs> because some of the other things that Aileen brought up were that Eugenia, I hadn't actually seen this video clip, I don't think, but Eugenia had mentioned that she was bullied at school and that that had clearly fed into everything she was going through. Speaking as someone who also was bullied hardcore at school and where a lot of my issues came from is bullying. If you get it on the internet, it flashes you back so hard to school bullying. And, you know, my own ED relapse of like the last year was really just kicked off by online bullying. 
um, or drama, as we like to call it. Oh, it's it's drama. No, it's it's generally bullying. And it doesn't really matter, it seems like, whether people put at the front of the video a quick little, oh, please don't send any hate to so-and-so. There's people who will do it because anger and scorn are addictive. And, you know, when you get running with it, you, you know, you want to go shoot over to the other social media. You want to go research this person. You want to go dump all over them or like snicker at them and all the rest of it. You want to go do these things because it's addictive and it feels good. So you do have to realise that if you have one of these channels that makes its entire living off tearing other people down, it doesn't matter if you have a little printed thing at the front saying, please don't go and send any hate. And a lot of people don't even bother doing that. They're just like, oh, please, you know, do what you want. I'm, I'm going to stir you up into a fit of fury every video. And I'm not going to expect anything bad to happen to anyone. You know, even when I'm talking about someone who clearly has a mental illness in some capacity, uh, oh, yeah, just just go pour bullying and scorn on them. Um, that's not going to be problematic at all. That's not going to result in any suicides at all. So the bullying thing with Eugenia is so heartbreaking that I can't believe I didn't notice this, that it was after some large creator, I can't remember who, but there was a large creator who had just said, please go and show Eugenia a lot of love instead of hate. And this this was years ago. This was just before her recovery attempt. Someone had said, just go and show her a lot of love. Please stop showing her hate. Just show her love. And it was shortly after that that she posted the video saying, I'm going offline to work on my mental health. And according to Aileen's video, Eugenia did actually have help lined up before she was 5150, before she was forced into sectioned treatment, which is where the ED treatment actually came from by the sounds of it. Because according to Aileen's research, and I, I trust this, but it, if it's true, then oh my God. According to Aileen's research, 5150s, this forced involuntary hold, cannot actually force an ED person into ED specialist treatment. All it's going to do is put you in a general mental hospital, like on a locked ward with the really, really severe cases. And speaking of someone who voluntarily went into one of these places and promptly did a U-turn and bailed within four hours, those places are terrifying. From everything that people have said about the hospital the psychiatric hospital that Eugenia was forced and locked in, it sounds like it was an equally grim and scary place. If you are like in a manic episode or a psychotic episode and you're not safe, something like that can be vital and it can be really valuable. But when it comes to an anorexia case, it just doesn't seem like it's something that's going to be helpful because what it sounds like was actually going on was that Eugenia did have specialist help lined up. And this is what is so gutting and what we didn't know. And I guess this, this is the thing that Eugenia doesn't like to talk about her ED online. Um, and I used to think that was like a really bad thing. I used to think, you know, this this whole I'm fine act is is like the one thing that I would find toxic about Eugenia. But then after, like, say, my last year's relapse, I came to really regret having been honest about the fact that I'd relapsed. Because once you are open about it, you, people do assume that you're going to be a completely open book about everything. For starters, you get way more questions, way, 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 way more questions. But also because of the way the public has come to perceive Eugenia and the way that the public now thinks all ED people are like our misassumptions of Eugenia, that they don't want help, that they don't seek help, that they're always body checking, that they're very toxic people. And this is the assumption that people online have because of the fact that they couldn't magically make Eugenia better and it frustrated them. And so they've gone from being caring towards her to picking on her because they're frustrated and they feel helpless and they want something they can control which is kind of ironic because that's exactly what's going on with eating disordered people is that they feel sad and depressed or frustrated or scared or whatever and they want something they can control which turns into their body and their diets. But for us, we feel that way about Eugenia. It's like, we can't help her. It's scary. We can't control it. What can we control? Not caring. Because it won't hurt us when she dies if we don't care. If we hate her anyway, it won't hurt us. I feel like that's what's going on in a lot of people is that they 
are guarding their own emotions and their own heart by hardening it towards Eugenia because on some level they must know this is not going somewhere good, we're going to lose her eventually and if I really, really love her and care about her, that's going to hurt. Whereas if I just start picking on her, I'm not going to care. I think you're actually going to care. I think you're going to care just as much. I think you're A, going to feel really shitty, obviously, but B, for these people who have made eating her the centre of their career... What are you going to do? What are you going to do if bullying her actually does lead to her demise and she's gone? Are you going to find another eating disordered person online to pick on instead? Probably in the case of some of them. Um, It is becoming such a toxic whirlwind. But yeah, returning to the getting help thing, it sounds like she was actually lined up to get specialist treatment. But you know, her friends who decided to 5150 her, they, even though it sounds like she told them about this, that she was going to go see a specialist doctor, but it was going to be a few weeks' time. Because specialist doctors are very much in demand, particularly when it comes to eating disorders. It's very hard to find one. And if you get an appointment, like a few weeks is is nothing in terms of this. Like you're often talking months to a year to get treatment. So the fact that she had someone lined up in a few weeks is like as, like a miracle. Honestly, this is a miracle. But for some reason, her friends decided that, yeah, just, you know, locking her up involuntarily in this scary, scary ward that can't give her specialist treatment, it cannot legally force her into specialist treatment, is going to be better than letting her, you know, uh, with a disorder that's all about control. Now, I still believe they did it with pure hearts. I do still believe they intended it to go well and that they cared and that they were that caring. You know, and what if you don't know enough, you don't know enough, but they should have researched more, I guess, into what a 5150 would in, involve. Um, and, you know, from what Eugenia says, it sounds like they didn't talk to her enough about the possibility of hospitalization and things like this they you know they didn't talk to her enough about it so it really seemed to come out of the blue fair and you've got a disorder that's all about control and then every bit of control is snatched away from you and the other thing I'd like to mention about this is that people because of the Eugenia Cooney hate and the misassumptions and the rumors and all of this people don't seem to realize anymore that eating disorders are almost never standalone illnesses you don't you don't just have someone who is perfectly fine but becomes anorexic to a very severe degree for a vast number of years that doesn't happen there is there is always something behind it whether it's depression whether it's anxiety ocd actually i would say is one of the most severe crossovers with eating disorders People who have OCD issues and they those intrusive thoughts and those terrifying, like, if I do this, the worst thing in the world is going to happen. Those kind of thoughts, if they get locked onto food, that is really difficult to deal with. Autism as well, because of the sensory processing issues, um, food can just be more unpleasant to autistic people. Basically, you know, all the mental illnesses you can think of can weave into EDs. You know, BPD is another big one. And if you've still got the bullying and the negative everything coming at you, obviously that's going to drive it harder. But like I say, I I can't believe I didn't notice that it was after everyone had been nice to Eugenia. Then she decided to treat herself better. And that should have been so obvious. The way that people are treating Eugenia is clearly feeding into how she feels about herself and how she treats herself. I mean, obviously, obviously, because for Eugenia, it's got to feel how it felt for me at high school, but on like steroids, basically, that the feeling I had in the 90s before the internet was a thing and everyone in my world was the people at my school and the people in my family. If everyone at your school hated you and everyone in your family misunderstood you, well, you must be loathsome, right? You must be because everyone in the world says so. How can you have a different belief? And for Eugenia, when it seems like everyone around her, every comment section she makes, every Instagram post, no matter how brief, how innocent, how happy, 
it's immediately met with everything is about your ED. Everything is about your ED. Ah, you're toxic. Ah, your body checking. It makes everything you're doing so toxic and so about your ED and there's, there's no escape from it. And this, I think, was one of the main and most beautiful points that Aileen mentioned was that Eugenia does not need her ED pointing out anymore, even in a positive way, even, oh, you look better way. We all know that 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 can be just not the thing to say. The point that Aileen made that I thought was really, really beautiful was to pull her, to show her positivity, first of all, to show her love in the hope that she can learn to show it to herself, but also to concentrate on everything else in the video but the ED. Because I think, obviously, I mean, Eugenia now knows, sadly, from experience, that if she does gain weight in recovery, people immediately are like, Eugenia's gained weight, blah, blah, blah. You know, and she's had some horrible comments on her live stream um, about, oh, you must be glad about your ED because it's made your face look slimmer when it, it didn't look slim before. Or you know, people have made horrible comments, and I, I don't know what they were on about because she's always just had a gorgeous face um people are gonna be assholes i guess it's probably someone who just deliberately wanted to poke the bear and see if they could just make her even sicker or make her cry or whatever you know and i suspect eating disorder jealousy honestly was behind that comment um and that there's a lot of that going around you know if, if you start out similarly in weight to someone and they drop lower than you oh Oh, the the jealousy and the rage can be real. Or if someone feels relatable in some kind of way and then they drop weight and they get sicker and you don't or can't or whatever, um, the jealousy and the rage can be real. But returning to the point, Eugenia knows that the whole world is obsessed with her weight. How on earth do you recover in that climate? How, How do you do it? But if the whole attention suddenly becomes wow those shoes are really cool in this video or like oh you did your makeup really well in this video oh my god your dog is like amazing right now (laughs) and all of that if people just take the fucking focus off her weight and start seeing other things about her you know i mean she's not an idiot she's she's gonna know that people are still gonna talk about her weight and fixate on it to some degree and she knows it's visible we all know it's visible but she recovers even a little bit hopefully enough people are still gonna focus on the other stuff in the video to be blind to the stuff that she doesn't want them commenting on i think that could be really 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 positive too um you know and it it got me thinking about ed people in the public sphere generally and how terrible the prognosis for many of them has been that i don't think i can think of a single publicly very Eded person who has actually really beat their disorder that you think about people like Karen Carpenter you think about people like Lena Zavaroni um and obviously these two examples were back when there wasn't much knowledge about EDs and I mean Lena Zavaroni ended up having experimental surgery to try and cure her it was almost like a I'd quite like to make a video about this at some point, but it was it was almost like a like a semi lobotomy that they cut certain parts of the brain. It was literally brain surgery she had and she died shortly afterwards. Um, So you've got those tragic stories you've got. I'm blanking on her name, but the girl who was in the Big Brother house who had a history of EDs and was in the media for years and years and years with her relapses and rebounds and all of this. And the pandemic was what finished her off, not because she got COVID, but because the isolation was what did her in. And she died, I think, in 2020 or 2021. Um, Amy Winehouse, another example, obviously. People who are well known to be ED in the public eye, the kinds of comments they get, the kind of focus, the kind of scrutiny that's on them, they don't tend to do very well. Um, and that is quite a scary thought. But obviously no one, no one, literally no one in the history of humanity that we know of has been in Eugenia's position. Nobody has been this famous almost solely for their eating disorder while never saying a word about their eating disorder. When you're talking about these previous examples, you know, Karen Carpenter, Lena Zavaroni, Amy Winehouse, um, they were 
really before the internet was on the degree that it's on today. They could lock themselves in their houses and they could be away from that shit to a degree. But Eugenia, it's all around her. Um, and I think something that spoke to me of of kind of quite severe depression or fear was the quote that was in Aileen's video from Eugenia on one of her live streams and someone had said, why, why don't you go and get some IRL friends? And Eugenia had said something like, I, I don't feel like I need IRL friends. I have my family and I have you guys. And I felt like that, I, I don't know, like, where is where is that coming from? Is that coming from past experiences of hurt, of bullying at school, of being 5150 by your friends when you thought you were going to an escape room game and you thought you were going for a lighthearted night out and you ended up locked in a mental hospital um, for days on end. She's clearly lost a lot of faith in IRL friends. And... But also, it seems like her live streams and the people who are her supporters have become her whole world and have become a complete stand-in for IRL friends. And, I, you know, I think I'm kind of slightly guilty of doing the same, that doing this can feel like having a conversation. It can feel like pseudo socialization. It really can. And you don't feel as much need to go out and socialize. If you've, you know, if you've had a reason to get dressed up, to have a chat, and obviously, if you're live streaming too, you're getting instant feedback. It's like socialising. It is socialising. It's clearly uplifting and it's, I guess, a safer way to socialise is kind of maybe how it can feel because you've got moderators. They can block people. You can block people. You can turn off the camera. You're at home where you feel safe. Um, and I mean, something that's literally just popping into my mind right now and that no one's ever mentioned, people criticise Eugenia a lot about how little she goes out and how little of kind of a, you know, a life in quotation she has outside of the internet. No one seems to have thought about the fact, is Eugenia maybe agoraphobic? Does she have a huge anxiety about going out? And maybe this is why she has a driver who goes everywhere with her and waits outside. Because me with my car, this always used to be me with my car, I would drive everywhere, I would much rather have a sober night out because I knew I could escape whenever I needed to. And I don't identify as agoraphobic, I don't put that label on myself, but to be fair, it's probably semi-true. And for Eugenia too, obviously the outside world has shown her a hell of a lot of unkindness. Maybe her house is the one place she feels safe and therefore live streaming is a way she can socialise safely from her bedroom where she feels safe with her family. That's another thing that we're all mocking about her is, ugh, Eugenia has no life, ugh, Eugenia can't drive. All of these things. And when you're talking about someone who has a very severe mental illness, of course, of course they are going to be in a position in life that is not on par with their peers. They may not have moved out yet. They may not have learned to drive yet. They may not have ever worked like a normal job um, because they are someone who has a disability. And therefore, they are going to be held back in life. And that is not something to pick fun at um, at all. So, yeah, I guess to round off this completely massive waffle, um, I really, really hope that more people do go and see Aileen's video and see the extent of how much Eugenia has been vilified for things that were absolutely not her fault, you know, and... I mean, the, the biggest, the biggest accusation being thrown at her about allowing abusers on her discord, um, you know, when actually she, when it come, came to the crunch point of kicking them out and, and, you know, ignoring it and all of this, she hadn't been she hadn't been told that it was on her discord. The person who told her I'm, I'm being abused, they didn't mention it was on her discord that she just thought she was being confided in and then the point at which for two days she completely ignored everyone she had unplugged and gone to Disneyland and you know she came back and she dealt with it as soon as she could and you know it was clearly clearly cognitive bias that people have that oh Eugenia is horrible she's horrible she must have done this on purpose rather than allowing oh is there a reason is there a reason where was she what was going on but I think also Eugenia does seem quite reticent to get into drama with people herself. Um, she can be 
slow to defend herself, I think. And that is probably a result of school bullying, that she's probably tried defending herself in the past, verbally or physically, who knows? And she has found that actually it, it doesn't work. It just amplifies things. Um, and, it, you know, it can do. It can do. If you if you try and apologise and you don't quite word it right or whatever, it can absolutely amplify things. And sometimes it's just easier to say nothing. And this does seem to be Eugenia's stance that, you know, she doesn't want to talk about the ED online. If people accuse her of stuff, she she doesn't really, you know, she doesn't make a big video, of, you know, coming forward and confidently saying, look, this is what actually happened. Here are the receipts. This is what went on. And, you know, the fact she doesn't do videos like that could be to do with the extent of her ED, that, you know, maybe she is just too tired and too weak and too foggy to put together that kind of stuff with all that evidence. Um, or maybe she is just so used to hate by now that she just thinks, you know what, it's just easy to just bury my head in the sand, just let it ride out. I think if she ever does recover, I think it will be very, very interesting watching her grow that confidence in recovery because from people I have known uh, with EDs who used to be very, very, like, a, honestly, a bit of a pushover, very, 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 very nice bit of a pushover, um, when they did recover even slightly, they had this stage of being so fierce, like so, so fierce. Sometimes, sometimes almost like a little bit too much, but it was good. It was good to see it coming out of them. Just like, yeah, it's in you. It's in you and it's coming out. And maybe if you learn to actually really just express this in the right way, not necessarily just blow your top at people, but it is good to see that you're not taking it out on yourself, basically. I would rather you've raged out at other people than at yourself because you've done that for too long and it's not good. I think it would be really cool to see that with Eugenia too and just see, like, is she is she going to have this, this turnaround at some point that, you know, people showing her love online, it did make her seek recovery in the past. Could it do it again? And yeah, as for ED people as a whole, ED people do not in general conform to all the stereotypes that we've been pushing, usually falsely, onto Eugenia. But for starters, ED people are generally seeking treatment of some kind. Even if you see them getting worse, even if they don't seem to be doing well, every ED person I have known in my life has generally been with a therapist or looking for a therapist or going inpatient, coming out of inpatient, going through revolving doors of treatment. They have always been under someone or waiting on a waiting list all the time. Um, people with EDs don't tend to just give up and go, you know what, this is great, this is fun, I'm just, I'm just going to be like this and this is fantastic. And as it turns out, even Eugenia had sought treatment and did have specialist treatment lined up before the 5150 came along and kind of buggered it all for her. So most of us are seeking treatment in some way. The other thing is obviously the body checking thing, that every ED person in every video they're doing, they are not necessarily body checking. Oftentimes their passion is clothing or their passion is whatever and your body cannot help being in a video i mean I've, I've had comments literally where it's just been like you know this this view from here from here i've i've had body checking comments because my shoulders looked bony and it's like i didn't even freaking notice until you pointed it out please don't just flick about the body checking word all the time all over the place it, it really drives ed people away from their healthy passions and it really just puts the focus on their ed and their body and all of this it's just not great. And then please remember that ED is in, the, in and of themselves are very, very, very complex and difficult to treat and dangerous illnesses, but usually they are comorbid with something else as well. So you were dealing with someone who has got a complex bundle of mental health issues. So please don't try and petition somebody off the internet for being ill and for looking ill. I mean, sure, if you've got someone who looks decidedly anorexic and they are there you know, genuinely doing the prana thing and genuinely saying, well, this is what I eat in a day. This is how you do it. This is this is why I look like this. Um, I have never, ever, ever in all of my years on pro-anorexia forums when I was younger and all of that, I have never known a low weight eating disordered person preach how they did it to anyone. Most people who have reached a low weight, they are so fucking miserable by that point they do not have the pride to be like, oh, I'll be your teacher. They do not have any desire to drag anyone else 
where they are. Even people who maybe started giving diet tips and stuff when they were at a higher weight when they were starting out in their ED. Oh yeah, I've known people give tips at that point. But once they get to a genuinely low weight, they are not having fun anymore and they don't want to see anyone else end up in their situation. So they, they, it doesn't happen. And then I guess the final point from Aileen's video, I think does concern um, having someone you know, 5150 or sectioned or whatever it's called in your country, having them forced into a psychiatric hospital. I think it's... It certainly made me think a lot more about that kind of stuff. I mean, it's not a situation I've ever been in where I've had to force anyone inpatient, but it does make me realize, although you think, my God, this person needs help, let's just get them help. Help is, is not, it's not like this, this broad scope umbrella term and that if you get them into a hospital, they're going to magically be fine because all care is equal. It is not. And if the care you give someone is wrong for their personal disorder, it can do far more harm than good. Um, and that it does seem to be the case in Eugenia's case that, you know, she does increasingly, it seems to be talk about the friends who put her in there and the situation as traumatic. So I would say, if, you know, if you do have anyone who's suffering from any kind of illness and you think I need to force them, force them into hospital somehow, I need to trick them into hospital somehow because this is ridiculous. Um do your research on what the 5150 will entail. Do your research on the local hospital that they're likely to be put into. Is it good? Is it a good place? Is it going to be helpful? But I would say the majority of these places, that they are not really set up for complex care. You know, if you have someone who does have issues around control and leaving the house, so if you've got someone who's agoraphobic or autistic or OCD, anything that's, that's around control, having them 5150s is going to be so freaking traumatic. Um, obviously there are situations where it needs happening, you know, but the, the only situations they tend to overhear anyway, they will only put people in if they are like actively suicidal or actively about to harm someone else. Those are the only two things they will do over here now. Um, but it seems like the US is a little bit looser with that kind of stuff. All of that said, I will shut up in case you haven't gone to see Aileen's video yet. So uh, I will link it below. Best video I have seen on YouTube in so long. Absolutely amazing. Can't wait to see the rest of her content. As usual, I will leave my other ED related videos linked below. But I would seriously just go watch Aileen's video. It's better than anything I've ever made. So go watch it. Uh, with that said, over and out. Bye-bye.